When I think of the Great Smoky Mountains, I think of the vast, wondrous summit views, fog covering the hillside, and rugged hiking terrain. However, there's an unexplored aspect of this region that few people are aware of. Only located in a few of the highest peaks above 5,500 feet elevation, in the Southern Appalachian Trail lies the second most endangered forest in the United States and a remnant of the last ice age. This ecosystem is called the Southern Appalachian Spruce Fir Forest, and it used to dominate the entire region in the last ice age. And apparently, it's a glorious ecosystem, and one of the best hikes to find it is the top of Mount Lacan in the Great Smoky Mountains. But this extremely difficult hike isn't just about the rare mystic forest at the top. But along with the eight landmarks along the 5.5 mile way, the 6,593 foot summit apparently has one of the best views in the United States. Let's go. All right, here we are starting on the trail, Alum Cave up to Mount Lacante. It's 5.5 there, 5.5 back, 11 total. 3,000 feet tight. elevation gain. 3,000 feet. Let's get it. Great Smoky Mountains, let's go. So we're 1.4 miles from the first known landmark, Arc Rock, but we're gonna try and find a few more along the way. So far the trail has very beautiful nature. Just keep in mind, even though it's mid-spring, it's still gonna be extremely cold. That's mostly due to the elevation. Dude, look at that. First landmark you're gonna find, the floor arc rock, slip and slide, rapid. Something unique we noticed right away is the pristine see-through water. It's crystal clear. It's amazing. This is because the streams of the Smokies are relatively pure, kind of like distilled water, since it emerges from springs and groundwater seeps. 1.4 miles in, we found the famous boulder that's marked on all trails. This is so cool, so cool. Basically, anywhere you're gonna be in the Smoky Mountains, you're not gonna have reception. So it is kind of out there in the middle of nowhere, but there's a ton of people on the trail. Look at these handprints. It's your handprint, dude. A perfect match. It's your handprint, dude. Oh my, it was my ancestors. <laughs> So slightly past Arc Rock, we're leaving the riverside. So the trail is getting a lot more quiet. The next landmark that's marked on all trails is called Inspiration Point. But before that, we're gonna see if we can find any of our own landmarks as well. But from here, the steep adventurous trek with the narrow ridges and breathtaking views of the Smokies was just beginning as we moved closer and closer to the relic of the last ice age. Because of the elevation increase, we're seeing shifts in the biodiversity and ecosystem. I think we're like two miles into the hike now. We're starting to get some sun out here. The scenery, absolutely amazing. It kind of like changed in the demographic. We were like along the riverside. It was pretty windy and cold. And then all of a sudden now we're like out in the sun, nice and warm, perfect weather. I feel like so far we've easily done a thousand feet. The fact that it's maintained very well makes it seem easier. I imagine if you were trying to do that like non-stop, like a good pace, it would be pretty tough. Yeah. 
And the third landmark on this trail, Jagged Lookout. Here were the first openings where we could view the amazing Smoky Mountains. It was also here where I think we found the first red spruce tree on the trail. And to our right, we could see why the Smokies got the name. In this sub-range of the Appalachians, high amounts of hydrocarbons and water are released by trees, creating lingering fog, or in other words, it makes the mountains look smoky. What an amazing hike so far. No wonder it's a national park that we're in. Real cool. It's probably how the river gets so clear. Here we are at the next landmark. Be careful, because you can walk right past it. Inspiration point to my left. And if you look closely, you can see a hole right through the rock called the Eye of the Needle. The further up we went, the more the vegetation changed. Off to your right, you can't miss it, Alum Bluff Cave. It appears that Alum Cave Bluff is the final destination for many. Afterwards, the remaining trail is far less crowded. Yeah, this Alum Cave looks very cool. It's kind of like, it's so different. It, it seems like you're down in a canyon, like in a desert all of a sudden. We're like up on a mountain. It changes from this like rock face into this powder like desert. 2.7 miles to the summit. That's why they call it the Great Smoky Mountains. Fun, rugged terrain, but there's also a lot of cool safety features. You don't really feel too unsafe while you're doing it. Here we are over about 5,000 feet up, 5,100 feet up, but it kind of flattens out over here. We're what, like halfway through the trail so far, and you can't even tell how high up you are. It's kind of funny. Or it just seems like we're in another forest, but we are 5,000 feet up. So we were at Klingman's Dome yesterday. That's over 6,000 feet elevation. What's amazing to me is how quickly your body can kind of adjust to the elevation. Right now we're about 5,000 feet elevation and I feel a little bit better than I did yesterday. And today we've been hiking for a while. Well, yesterday we weren't hiking for a while. We were just walking like 0.5 miles to Klingman's Dome. The Mount Lacante Stairmaster we got right here. At this point of the trail is considered climbing onward. A lot of people before this point will stop and not make it to the top of Mount Lacante, but we are gonna make it to the top. So keep trekking. This is the point where it gets very quiet. The overall vibe of the trail changed again, but this time to a darker and more mysterious feeling. It was on this stretch where the steep miles, high elevation, and cold thin air started to catch up, but we were adamant on seeing the endangered, rare ecosystem, and the famous summit view at the top. Here it is, the relic from the last ice age in the second most endangered forest in the United States, the Southern Appalachian Spruce Fir Forest.
The Southern Appalachian Spruce Fir Forest is a temperate coniferous forest located in the Appalachian Mountains of the southeastern United States. The forest is typically found at elevations above 5,000 feet and is characterized by high levels of precipitation, cool temperatures, and acidic soils. It reminds me of something like twilight. It's substantially colder up here. So what are we, like three-fourths through the hike right now, almost like four-fifths or something like that? Amazing view. It looks like we're reaching very close to the top. Check this out. All of this water is freezing over, and it's mid-spring. Still cold enough up here to be freezing. As you can see, there are many dead trees throughout the forest. This is due to the introduction of balsam woolly adelgid in the early 1900s, which is an invasive species native to Europe. These small wingless insects have caused significant damage to fir trees with mortality rates of Fraser fir reaching all the way up to 99%. As a result, nearly half of all Fraser firs were killed in the 20th century. But luckily, in the place of many dead trees is a baby fir growing in its place, which gives the future of these endangered trees hope. Here we are on the spruce fir forest. Looks pretty cool. And it's like the overgrown of just all this moss. This rare forest only covers 100 miles of square feet on the planet. So in this endangered ecosystem, there are two types of trees, red spruce and Fraser fir. They can only survive in extremely cold environments. Man, it is amazing. You know what I love about this hike is that along the hike, there's so many different settings. It changes from, you know, the riverside to this moss forest to this like cave, like deserty area almost into this like amazing forest type area. This is uh, pretty cool. So we'll see what the, uh, the end of the hike holds. Just so dense. Like, look at all of these Christmas trees. <laughs> This place is just packed with Christmas trees. It's gotta be where Santa Claus is, dude. dude. There is no doubt. There's several different ways that you can get to the top of Mount Lacan. That way is like Rainbow Trail, Bullhead Trail, Cherokee Orchard. This way is uh, the Alum Cave. Mm -hmm. So we're at the notable Leconte Lodges right now, the highest lodges in the east of the United States. But from right here, I don't know if I can pick it up with the camera, but we are on the same level as clouds. They provide lodging, food, hot beverages. You gotta try it out one day. <laughs> are they paying us for this advertising? <laughs> To the top. The final stretch was in the heart of the Fable Spruce Fir Forest. You ready? Here we are, final landmark, Mount Lacante, the summit. Of every summit view I've seen so far, this was the very best yet. Like most things in life, a breathtaking view like this is so much better after earning it. And anyone who completes this challenging hike makes you deserving. Oh, 
Yeah, we're building our own dream. This is a whole new level of scenic views. But what many people mistakenly overlook is the fact that Mount LeConte has the greatest elevation change east of the Rocky Mountains, with a height of 5,301 feet from the base to its peak. This gives it the unearthly view, but also savage winds. And another thing I must say, through the Smoky Mountain region, there are plenty of scenic overlooks with parking, each with a different unique view. This mountain was insanely massive. It's the third highest peak in the Smoky Mountains behind Mount Goyet and Klingman's Dome, which is the tallest. To give you an idea from how large Mount LeConte is, here is the mountaintop from Klingman's Dome where we were yesterday. Here, we can easily see the monstrous Mount LeConte that looked roughly five miles away, but in truth, it was over 10 miles away. So I would say just in terms of like overall difficulty, it's a very difficult hike. 11 miles, over 3,000 feet in terms of elevation gain, and traversing through a lot of the areas are very steep, and you're hugging a ridge line at times, which can be kind of dangerous. So I would say just overall, difficulty-wise, I would give it like a 9.1. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And for scenery, this trail was amazing. Not only are all of the lookouts just incredible, where you can see many different views of the Smoky Mountains, but also you have two completely separate forests, both with vastly different ecosystems. The one at the bottom is very standard with a lot of really cool flora, and at the top is the second most endangered ecosystem in the United States, and that looks right out of a fantasy movie. So when it comes to scenery, I would give it a 9.2. On top of that, the first stretch up to Arc Rock, you're hugging a really nice, cool looking river. So you get the best of almost every world. A really cool waterfall type trail where you're hugging a river. Then once you get to Arc Rock, you see many different canyons and various different boulders. And at the way top, you have all of those different sceneries of the Smoky Mountains. So a 9.2. And if you like my shirt, Live in real life. Check it out in the link below. Soon after, we headed to the closest town on our way back, where I witnessed for the first time an elk crossing the street. No, 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 Elk. Cross. Then arrived at the picturesque town, Cherokee, North Carolina. And of course, you know, we get Mexican. And that was the first time Muscle Mason ever admitted to being tired in his entire life. Thank you so much for watching. Have a blessed day.